Welcome to this complete beginner wood carving lesson. This will be part two in the series on carving this little chick. And in this part of the video, we are going to take what we did in part one here, and we're going to move it to this one on the right. So mostly we're going to be just rounding off in this video. Um, and really our only learning goal for this part of the video is uh, that you'll be able to ap apply your rounding skills to shape a carving. So no really new skills today, but good practice on how we shape the bottom and top and round it off. So I, I didn't mention it in the first video, but the knife I'm using for this project is a one and a half inch uh, blade from OCC Tools. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, this one just happens to have a, a smaller palm handle. Um, I don't know if they even make that one anymore, but um, uh, this is a, a size and a, a make that I recommended in my uh, How to Choose Your First Whittling Knife, and uh, that's what I'm using today. So, rounding off. Uh, if you've been following along the other projects in this series, you've already kind of done this. What I'm going to do is, first of all, mark up about a third of the way up um, from the base of the carving and uh, put a horizontal line here and we'll round the bottom of it first. Okay. And that line just going to give me a little bit of a reference to make sure that I'm doing it the same place twice. Now one thing that I um, want to be a little bit careful of here is the bottom of an egg is um, a little bit more bulbous it doesn't come to as much of a point so I don't want to round too much and if you it's easy to get carried away here and make a really thin thin um, rounding on the bottom and a really th thicker rounding on the top and that that would look weird so I'm going to do my push cuts coming in from that line at regular intervals all the way around here just next to each other but I'm not working really hard on pushing very deeply into that uh, really just doing a little bit at a time there and of course following that pattern right from that same line about a third of the way up from the bottom until I've made it all the way around okay and uh, I don't want to I don't want to overdo it so that's really all I'm going to do it's just a little bit of a a little bit of a narrowing there for the first time around now the next time around I'm going to do um, halfway between this line and the bottom, uh, just like I have been on some of the other the other projects we've been doing. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go super deep, but I'm going to alternate a little bit since I've got those flat facets from my last one, and I'm just going to kind of alternate and do these um, in between or right over the ridge that was left from my first time around. And it just it just leaves a nice little pattern of facets, I think. When we do that so again i'm not going super deep uh, with these um, but trying to keep it roughly even all the way around so i've got two stages going down there and it's not even uh, rounded off a, a ton uh, but I'm, I'm getting that bit of a taper from here down to there and so then the last uh, part of that is going to be going halfway between the cuts i just made in the bottom so about the 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 last quarter between the line and the top here, um, the last quarter of that. And then this one, I am going to push in a little bit harder. I'm going to push on that with my thumb there and bring that in just a little bit tighter than I did the other ones. And I think that helps with the kind of egg shape. It's a little bit wider towards the middle and then a tighter uh, rounding towards the bottom. And of course, you don't have the very bottom of the egg because you need it to be able to stand up. And so that that's roughly what I'm what I'm trying to do there. Now you could experiment with that and make it um, you know a little bit neater, uh, add it, make it make it wider, thinner, uh, whatever you want. But that's what I'm going to do. Now a lot of times I do come back to that line and I do just a very very light, like right across the surface, almost like you're just trying to shave those pencil marks off, which doesn't hurt. Although we're probably going to drawn back on in the last part of the video but that just extends my rounding just a little bit okay all right so that's it for rounding the bottom of it 
Now we're going to round the top in a very similar way, but um, on the top, uh, because of the way uh, an egg would be shaped, is I'm going to try to bring the top in a little bit tighter than I did on the bottom. So I'm going to start, and I'm not going to draw it this time because I know I have a reference here. I'm going to start right in the middle of the beak, right to the side of it, and I'm going to do a hard push cut up, and I'm going to bring it in further, round it more, more dramatically than I did the bottom. Because the other thing on the top is that I'm ultimately going to have to round that all the way across the entire top, whereas on the bottom, you know, I'm intentionally leaving it flat so it can stand up. Now when I get to the, the beaks here, this is where a pairing cut uh, would be helpful. So it's a little bit awkward for me to get my knife in here, but if I do it upside down, that pairing cut that we used in part one makes it a little bit easier for me to, to get to that. Okay. And you certainly can do it with a, with a push cut there if you want to. Okay. I'm actually going to come a second time around from that same level and bring it in from the same level, right, even with the beak. And I'm just going to do another cut on each of these to make it a little bit more severe. Because I've got so much I've got to round off the top. So much different than on the bottom where we wanted to keep it a little more bulbous. We've got more ground to cover on the top. All right. So, as you know, we're going to go halfway between here and the top and do the same thing. And again, I'm making these more, more deep this time. Kind of pushing in and rolling up a little bit as I go, as I go up. And the wood kind of leads to doing that naturally. And I can kind of go right over the, the front of the beak here. We might as well do it now, but one thing I want to think about on the beak here is that I want to have space to put the eyes there. So I need space to put the eyes in. When you get to painting, it's going to be a lot easier to do that if you have a little bit of a flat surface here rather than this kind of curved surface here. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to do some really careful cuts back down to either side of the beak there. And see what that created those nice flat surfaces there for me for the eyes. So when I'm rounding that, I'm not losing that flat surface. I'm going to bring that back, and that way I, when I get to painting my eyes or drawing them on or whatever, I'll have an easier time doing that. Okay. All right, so we're going to keep that pattern going halfway between there and the top. And now I'm going as hard as I can, really pretty dramatically into the top because I'm going to have to round this all the way across the top. And again, these cuts are a little bit harder because you're going more across the, across the grain. And at this point, I've still got a flat top here, so essentially I'm just going to keep going halfway from there to the top and push in, you know, almost straight across the grain at this point. If you've got a nice sharp knife, it should be able to handle that okay. And I'm going to do that until I've got that top completely shaved off. All right. So we've got the general shape there. Um, you can see it's um, a little bit rounding more toward the bottom here and a little bit more of a graduate, gradual round toward the, toward the top. So the last thing we want to do on this stage is I'm going to go ahead and cut this, um, uh, this kind of uh, coif. I don't, I don't know what you would call that on a chick, but <laughs> uh, this kind of spot where I'm going to put his, his feathers. And so we'll go ahead and do that on this part of the video before we wrap up this stage. So to do that, I'm going to start with uh, a V cut. And if it's helpful, I can draw on roughly where I'm going to go with that. I'm going to kind of go like here, kind of a off to the side, almost like there's a part in the hair, kind of straight back on the middle and then um, off to the side again in the back. So I'm going to start by doing basically a V cut on that, on the end of that line. So that means I'm going to cut in one way and the other way across that line, basically creating a V cut where that was. Okay. Now I'm going to extend that over here and I'm going to do 
basically kind of a v-cut again right off that corner down like this now this is where it gets a little bit tricky especially if you're a, a beginner is that when I'm doing this cut from the top I'm basically going straight down in between uh, the grains of the wood because my my grain is running vertically there that gets to be a little bit of a challenging cut to make so uh, you might have to do that a couple times to make it clean. My suggestion would be you just go a little tiny bit of a t at a time as you go across there. And essentially what we're doing now is we get across the, the main part is a stop cut with a push cut. But that push cut's going straight across the grain. So that's a hard cut to make. It's going basically straight across. So don't don't overdo it. You know, just take a little bit at a time. Take multiple cuts as you need to. Don't force it or you'll end up taking off the, the part that we're trying to keep there. Okay, and when we get around to the back, it's kind of more of a V-cut again. Across the side there. And then I can finish those off. Okay. Now what's happened is I, I put that in there, but I don't like this bump. It's weird that that's higher. I want this to be kind of the high point. Of his of his head so now I'm gonna to have to kind of come through and round that off so I'm gonna really carefully so I don't you know again run into this and knock off what I just carved but I'm gonna come across this hard ridge with my knife and I'm gonna do kind of push cuts across that to kind of soften that out and to just lower that right side of the head as much as I can going through Okay, that helps, but now I've got a little bit of a, if you can see that, a little bit of a flat spot on his head there. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it again, right over that ridge, to make that rounded just a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Um, we were talking about keeping the flat spot for the eyes. I feel like I've lost a little bit of that here, so I'm just going to come back and do another cut there and maybe on the other side to keep that even so I've still got a nice flat area for the eyes and that's it that's it for this step so uh, we rounded off the bottom rounded off the top and then added this little um, feather area and in the last step we'll finish by adding the egg and the texture on the hair so that's it for part two hope to see you in part three happy whittling